Hello and welcome to another edition of Vermont Standard Time, a co-production of Woodstock Community Television and the Vermont Standard newspaper here in Woodstock. My name is Tom Ayers and I'm the senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard. And my guests today are municipal manager Eric Duffy and the new Woodstock police chief, Joe Swanson. Welcome to both of you. It's great to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate this opportunity to talk about uh, Chief Swanson's appointment and the work he's uh, begun doing with the police department. Mm -hmm. Let me begin by asking you, um, Eric, can you recap briefly how the selection process unfolded for the new police chief after former Chief uh, Robbie Blish retired? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we put Chief Swanson through, uh, through the <laughs> ringer uh, for this, and I'm glad he came out on the other end. Um, but basically, we, uh, once we knew of uh, Robbie's impending retirement, uh, we uh, got into a contract with a well-respected um, consultant when it comes to police chief search. He's done um, Jim Baker. He's done searches around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, worked for in Vermont for a very long time and had a lot of connections. Uh, so we used him to kind of help us shepherd us through the process. Um, so we put together a job posting, a job description. Uh, we put it out on numerous different sites uh, and try to reach as many people as we could. Uh, it was a nationwide search, so we had people from all around the country who could view and apply if they wanted to. Uh, we actually had someone apply who was living outside the country at the time, so the reach was pretty wide. Um, after we got all the applicants, uh, we did a phone screening uh, interview with all the applicants to make sure that their resume and application fit you know, what they actually said they could do. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we created a interview committee with residents from um, the town, the village, uh, local business owners, uh, a trustee, and a select board member, and myself. Mm -hmm. um, that interview committee uh, interviewed a number of candidates that we decided to move to the first step. I believe we interviewed five or six candidates. Um, after that process, uh, the committee got together and selected a, a few candidates for the final, final round. Um, at that point, those candidates came in and interviewed with the trustees, uh, and then also interviewed with myself privately. Um, after that, that round interview, the trustees got together and it was a unanimous decision to offer the position to now Chief Swanson, uh, at the time, uh, Sergeant Swanson. Sergeant Swanson at the time. Yeah. And, and to that point, congratulations, Thank Chief. You. Thank um, you. Absolutely. And um, uh, I would imagine that the people of um, Woodstock appreciate having a native son as yeah. their new police chief. Talk a little bit about your career in law enforcement here in Woodstock and how you evolved into working with the Woodstock Police Department, how long that's been. In yeah, so it's been since 2000 um, when I was still in college. Um, Byron, when he was chief, I applied. And he put me through part-time, so I became a part-time officer. Um, working, you know, school vacations, weekends. Um, continued that for a few years after college. And in 2007, moved back home uh, to Woodstock and became full-time officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you, uh, and then you moved up Yeah, in 2013 the I was promoted to corporal. In 2014 I was promoted to sergeant. So for the last eight or nine years I've had, you know, direct leadership experience mm -hmm. uh, with the department working closely with Robbie. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, anytime uh, Chief Bush is away for more than a few days, Sergeant Swanson, yeah. now Chief Swanson was the acting chief in those situations. Mm -hmm. um, chief Swanson also served in uh, Afghanistan um, as an yeah. officer, and I was also promoted while he was there as well. Mm -hmm. So he has a history of moving up, you know, internally in the department he's in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when we got together to discuss uh, who we wanted as chief, uh, the chief's experience of starting out a part-time officer, and going through the entire process up to where he was at that point really gave some insight into how he knew the department ran, the history of it, and the history of the town, mm -hmm. uh, which is, he has many good qualities. <laughs> that, was, that was also a quality that, that we found very attractive yeah. in him. And of course, your dad was the long time yes. predecessor to- Yeah, long time town manager. Eric. Absolutely. To, to, the, to that relationship with the town and village, let me, let me ask this of you, Eric. Um, uh, it's officially known as the Woodstock Village Police yep. Department, and oversight of the department falls to you under the direction and decision-making powers of the trustees. Yes. Can you explain briefly how that relationship with the rest of the town works in terms of the services they get from the Village Police Department? Yeah, I think I can talk about the admin part, and I think the chief can then kind of take the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, 
the trustees uh, approve the budget, and in the budget is the police department budget, uh, so they fall within the realm of the, the trustees. Um, and they provide 24, seven, 24 hours, seven days a week coverage to the village itself. Um, but the town then contracts with the village to have police coverage. So the town pays um, a set fee each year. And with that fee becomes uh, 40 hours of coverage a week for the town. And then any emergency uh, coverage that is needed on top of that. I see. Okay. Okay. Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that a little bit in terms yeah, so of how you manage the... With, you know, within the department, we have a schedule, and so officers are scheduled either for a village shift, which you know could be a day shift, evening, or a midnight shift, um, and then an additional town shift with another officer that's scheduled um, to work. Um, and those hours are more variable, mm -hmm. uh, but that's for patrol that's focused out in the town I see. and to respond to calls out in the town. Um, okay. And uh, we have an officer that's on call, so... If we we'll, if we don't have someone on town, we have someone that's available to to handle calls. Yeah, so if you have an em maybe an yeah, emergent right. yeah. situation, you can respond to that with an on-call right. officer. If you don't have someone, right? Else. Yeah, there'll always be uh, the availability for the town to have police help if they need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you, so you've recently wrapped up your first month as yeah. Woodstock's new police okay. chief. What's that first month been like, and what have some of your priorities it's been, especially coming out of the flooding? Yeah, has that yeah. so the first, the, the flooding was Monday, and I think Robbie retired on Thursday. Thursday, and so Friday morning I was uh, sworn in as chief. So um, by that point in time, we'd kind of wrapped up as far as traffic control and you know police response to the flooding. Mm -hmm. We'd wrapped up. Um, so I've really just been focused on um, trying to, you know, run the department as we were, you know, keep an mm -hmm. even keel and not ma haven't <laughs> made any uh, sweeping change or anything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So just focused on ha um, having officers available and um, scheduling. What's your personnel level like now? Uh, is that we're short-staffed, yeah. uh, as is every department around the state. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And are you, are if you, I could interrupt for one second. Sure. Um, they are short staff, that's absolute. Um, but despite being short staff, they have been excellent from the flood and throughout the flood, sure. providing any needed support the community needed. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they can, they can do so much with being so short staff is, yeah. uh, uh, is a uh, compliment to Chief Swanson and then Chief Bush as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me, let me ask this of you, uh, Chief. Um, you've stepped into the shoes of a uh, pretty highly regarded yeah. legacy in Robbie Blish. Um, Talk a bit about your short term and especially your longer term vision for the department and particularly how are you planning to engage the community directly as your vision evolves? Right. Um, you know, so you know, Robbie came to Woodstock with a background in community policing. Um, and so we've we've done a number of things in those regards as to um, you know, foot patrols and being out and about not just doing motor vehicle. Um, so I think my vision for the department is to balance those two things, balance our community engagement um, and community policing, as well as maintaining um, traffic enforcement and um, mm -hmm. cr crime investigation. Mm -hmm. um, so developing some of the officers with their skills to investigate crimes, uh, all while still um, being ex approachable and accessible to the to the to the public. I see. Are, are there going to be opportunities as things uh, evolve for you to engage regularly in some kind of a, a forum or a coffee hour yeah, so or I had, something? I, had a, I held my first coffee with a cop oh. on uh, <laughs> uh, Wednesday morning. It won't vary. So I'm going to schedule additional ones um, periodically, mm -hmm. um, maybe once a quarter, maybe a couple right up front early on, mm -hmm. um, but maintaining and continuing those, inviting other officers with me. I didn't have anyone available on Wednesday morning, so it was just me, but <laughs> in the future, I'll schedule them so we can have another officer or two with us. Excellent, excellent. What about, um, in, in that regard, what about a particular emphasis on outreach to youths in the community? Um, uh, the school, engaging with the school yeah. systems, engaging with our teenage population, that kind of thing. Um, they, uh, 
there had been a push several years back had to establish a school resource officer with a grant that's available at the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, it was canceled. Mm -hmm. um, so our interaction in the school is generally if the school calls us. Mm -hmm. um, but we certainly enjoy interacting with youth um, when we see them or if they want to approach us and talk to us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. And I will say in the, the process of um, hiring a new chief, there, were, there was a few public forums uh, and then internal discussions too were about you know, trying to engage with the school and the school members and mem members of the youth and really uh, shifting any, any, any negative image of a police officer into a friendly officer with, with the youths. Um, I think that's something we'll want to do going forward, but like the chief said, being short-staffed as we are, every minute we, we have is very valuable. <laughs> and so unfortunately some priorities had to be shifted to make sure we have the coverage and we have people out there. Um, I think in an ideal world where they're fully staffed, there leaves more opportunities for more public engagement and more mm -hmm. things like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've heard that staffing is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, what are the biggest day-to-day -day challenges apart, of, uh, apart from staffing? Um, what, what are some of the biggest day-to-day -day challenges or responsibilities in the police department? Obviously, there's traffic enforcement, right. speed, um, um, and, and then I would imagine uh, your department's pretty heavily impacted by the seasonal tourism ebb and yeah. flow, too. Yeah. Is that correct? We're, we have about another week, and then it's going to be um, full-on through foliage season. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, day-to-day, it's for the officers on their shift is balancing, uh, you know, when they can get their foot patrol in around when they're doing their motor vehicle enforcement um, and responding to calls for service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does look like, and I, th I know that the select board is still discussing this, but it does look like there's going to be some potential challenges around that Cloudland Road mm -hmm closure that's coming up. I just wrote about that in uh, mm -hmm. last week's issue and yep. the, the direction that Pomford is taking that in. But um, it remains to be determined, I guess, what that section of cloud land, what the policing of that is going to be like that's mm -hmm. in Woodstock. Um, and um, you know, we've got a couple more weeks before the right. leads start to yeah. turn to yeah. resolve that. Um, are there any topics that I haven't touched on uh, that either of you would like to address, just broadly speaking, about the police department or about law enforcement issues here in Woodstock? Um, I think, you know, um, Chief Swanson has been very adamant about, you know, trying to be out more in the community, community mm -hmm. policing, and, and, and being uh, visible and trying to meet people um, where they are instead of having them come to us mm -hmm. uh, or our staff. Um, and all I'll say to that is, people who are listening, what, uh, whatever else, you know, if you see one of our officers out in the village or the town, feel free to go up and talk to them. They're they're they're, they're there to engage with the community. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're running away, running somewhere, you maybe leave them alone. But if they're walking around, you know, feel free to go up and introduce yourself, yeah. talk to them, see what's going on, um, because th they're there not only as police officers but also ambassadors of the community, mm -hmm. and we want people to view them that way. Um, and I think, you know. If a local, if a, if a tourist sees a local talking to the police officer, that means a tourist will feel comfortable talking to the police officer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then that's going to snowball, and you know that's going to be a very positive for the community. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I want to thank you both for taking absolutely. the time to come out and, uh, and and join us today on Vermont Standard Time. Again, congratulations! Thank you. And thank you very much. To, uh, welcome to your new role, and uh, Eric, it's always good to see you as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Very much. you.